Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about Willem's tumor. Starting with its introduction, Willem's tumor is also known as nephroblastoma. It is the most common uh, primary renal tumor in the childhood. It is the most common primary renal tumor in childhood. Third, it is the second most common abdominal tumor after neuroblastoma. So, it is the second most common abdominal tumor. after our neuroblastoma this is the introduction for this Blim's tumor next we'll see on its epidemiology this Blim's tumor accounts for six percentage of the pediatric tumor it accounts for six percentage of pediatric tumors uh, more than 75 percentage of the cases occur in children less than 5 years of age cases occur in children less than 5 years of age among them peak incidence is between the children 2 to 3 years of age so peak incidence occurs in the children between the age group of 2 to 3 years. Here, how it occurs? So, it, most cases occur due to the sporadic mutation. So, most of the cases occur due to sporadic mutation. 1 to 2 percentage of the cases will have the positive family history. And 10 percentage of the cases are associated with uh, syndromes. So next we will see the syndromes that are associated with this Willem's tumor. So the syndromes that are associated with Willem's tumor. First is WAGR syndrome. In this, it W contributes for Willem's tumor. A for aniridia, G for genitourinary abnormalities, and R for mental retardation. Next is Dennis Dash syndrome. Thirdly, it is with weedman syndrome. Fourth, Fanconi anemia. And fifth is trisomy 18. So these are the syndromes that are associated with the Willem's tumor. Next we will see its etiology. So, this Willem's tumor is derived from an incompletely differentiated renal mesenchyme. So, these are derived from an incompletely differentiated renal mesenchyme. Okay. So it has both, this tumor has both uh, undifferentiated and partially differentiated cells. 
so it comprises both undifferentiated and partially differentiated cells okay so normally the fetus will have a nephrogenic crest so what is this nephrogenic crest it is nothing but the undifferentiated mesenchyme so this nephrogenic crest is nothing but an undifferentiated mesenchyme this will regress normally this will regress normally okay but if it persist if this nephrogenic crest if it persist in the postnatal life it will become malignant so if it persist in the postnatal life this will turn into a malignancy called as wilms tumor okay so this is the etiology of the wilms tumor next we'll see the genetics associated with the wilms tumor so moving on with this genetics first is wt1 gene this wt1 gene is located in the chromosome number is located at the chromosome number 11p13 so this uh, wt1 gene mutation accounts for about 10 to 15 percentage of the wilms tumor cases the mutation can be either a sporadic mutation sorry somatic mutation so the mutation uh, of this wt1 gene can be a somatic mutation or it can be a germline mutation but majority of the cases account for this somatic mutation in germline mutation it is mostly associated with the syndromes so wilms tumor with the germline wt1 mutation are associated with the syndromes example wagr syndrome and danish dash syndrome in this danish dash syndrome it is because of missens germline mutation okay so next is wnt signaling pathway this wnt signaling pathway it plays a role in regulating the differentiation of the fetal kidney so it has an important role in regulating the differentiation regulating a role in the differentiation of the fetal kidney in this wnt signaling pathway the mutation occurs in these two genes namely ctnn b1 this gene encodes beta cantin taco taco encodes for beta cantinin another one is wtx gene so when the mutation occurs in ctnn b1 gene or wtx gene uh, we can expect a, a, a wilms tumor in that patient next third one when there is a mutation in p53 it accounts for anaplastic wilms tumor which has a poor prognosis okay fourth one 
when there is a loss of heterozygosity in 1p and the 16q loss of heterozygosity in 1p and 16q it accounts for risk of recurrence so this is about the genetics associated with the willems tumor next we'll go on to its pathology so going on to its pathology its gross morphology first we'll look into its gross morphology it is a large tumor which is a well circumscribed one on its cut section it will resemble a soft homogeneous mass it has 4k of hemorrhage and necrosis this is about its gross morphology moving on to its microscopic morphology here moving on to its microscopic morphology it has a classic triphasic combination so what this what this classic triphasic combination consists it has blastial cells i mean blastimal cells second stromal cells and third epithelial cells this blastimal cells are nothing but these are tightly packed blue cells so these tightly packed blue cells are called as the blastimal cells in 5% of the cases can have anaplastic cells okay these anaplastic cells there these are the anaplastic cells in this image b i have marked here these are the anaplastic cells these are nothing but uh, the cells which have a hyperchromatic and a pleomorphic nuclei and abnormal mitosis so they have a hyperchromatic and a pleomorphic nuclei okay this is about its morphology both gross and microscopic morphology next we'll see its clinical manifestations going on to its clinical manifestation the most common finding so the most common incidental finding is its abdominal mass Twenty-five percentage of the cases present with the hypertension at the beginning. So, twenty-five percentage of the children can have hypertension at the presentation. This occurs due to increased renin activity. Thirdly, the child can present with abdominal pain. Fourth, they will have a gross. hematuria which is a painless one they can present with other constitutional symptoms so other constitutional symptoms can be with fever anorexia and weight loss this tumor is also associated with the thrombus so they can have thrombus this can extend to inferior vena cava then to right atrium which is a very rare situation from there they can dislodge so the thrombus can dislodge and can result in pulmonary embolism okay this is a clinical manifestation of a child with the willems tumor what are its differential diagnosis so its differential diagnosis are one is neuroblastoma second non hodgkins lymphoma third rhabdomyosarcoma
fourth is hepatoblastoma. Next topic is how we are going to diagnose this condition. Diagnosis. So when you find an abdominal mass, first you do a USG abdomen. Starting off with the USG abdomen. This is done to differentiate or to confirm whether the mass arises from the intrarenal origin. This is to confirm that the mass arise from intrarenal origin. Secondly, it helps to differentiate solid and cystic lesion. Okay. Next we do a CT abdomen. So for what the CT abdomen is useful? This is done to find the extent of the disease. One. Second, to look for the integrity of the contralateral kidney. So you to look for the integrity of contralateral kidney. Next, to look for any metastasis. For this, you do the CT abdomen. Third, you do a USG with Doppler of, of the renal veins. This is done to find the extent or uh, uh, any thrombus is found and then done to find any uh, extent of the thrombus to any uh, inferior vena cava or not. Fourth, we do a CT chest. This is done before the surgery. These are performed preoperatively to look for any pulmonary metastasis. So to screen for any pulmonary metastasis. Okay. So diagnosis is done by imaging studies. So diagnosis is done by imaging studies while confirmation is done by the histology at the time of the nephrotomy. Okay. So diagnosis is by imaging studies and confirmation is by histology at the time of nephrectomy. Next we will see its staging. So next we will see its staging. Uh, so stage 1 is confirmed to a unilateral kidney and this can be re resected without any spillage or negative margin. There won't be any uh, positive uh, tumor cells. So you can resect it carefully. In stage 2 it can extend beyond kidney but it can be resected with a negative margin with either of the following. So either of the following includes... 1. It can be, uh, it can penetrate the renal capsule. Or, it can have an invasion into renal sinus. This is stage 2. Next is stage 3. In stage 3, there will be a residual tumor will be present after the surgery. So here the residual tumor is present after the surgery. But this is confined to the abdomen. Okay. So it can be either a tumor spillage. Second. It can see the wall of peritoneum. So it can see the wall of the peritoneum. Third, the lymph nodes will be positive. Fourth, there can be extension of the thrombus. 
into inferior vena cava okay so these are the uh, points in a uh, uh, patient with the stage 3 Willems tumor in stage 4 it is metastasis it is metastasis to lung liver bone and brain in stage 5 it is bilateral kidney involvement this is the staging of Willems tumor next we'll see the treatment for according to the stages for stage 1 and 2 that is they are being confined to the kidney and easily resected in stage 1 in stage 2 they are being easily resected with negative margin but they can have a, a capsule involvement or a, a renal sinus invasion so for both these stage you are going to do a nephrectomy with two chemotherapeutic agents With chemotherapy so what are the chemotherapeutic agents used here so these are vincristin and dactinomycin these are being used in the stage 1 and stage 2 for a duration of 18 weeks okay next for stage 3 and stage 4 Okay, for stage 3 and stage 4, here they perform surgery that is nephrectomy with 3 chemotherapeutic agents. These are vincristin, dactinomycin and doxorubicin. These three chemotherapeutic agents are being used. This is used for about 24 weeks. Along with this, radiation therapy is also being done. Okay, this is for stage 3 and stage 4. When it is a bilateral kidney involvement as in the stage 5, so you do for a bilateral kidney involvement, They do a partial nephrectomy. Partial nephrectomy is being done. So, when what are the cases partial nephrectomy is being done? One is bilateral kidney involvement. Second is unilateral kidney involvement. Along with this, there is a, a predisposition to this syndrome. And there is predisposition to the or Danish dash syndrome or WAGR syndrome okay then you do a partial nephrectomy or otherwise it is a radical nephrectomy is the treatment for the Willems tumor so when there is an anaplastic histology they will be having a poor outcome so that time you have to give a intensive chemotherapy plus radiation is being done for prognosis what are the for prognostic factor that is favorable so there are what are the favorable prognostic factor so favorable prognostic factors are one is low stage second when they have a favorable histology third young age of diagnosis fourth the when the uh, weight of the tumor is low and they have a low tumor weight these are the favorable prognostic factors will they have a better outcome the patient will have a better outcome when they have these points so this is about the Willems tumor so we have seen its sorry so we have seen its um, introduction epidemiology syndromes associated with Willems tumor its etiology its genetics associated with it 
pathology both gross pathology i mean morphology and microscopic morphology clinical manifestations its differential diagnosis and how do you diagnose its staging is being taught and its treatment so this is about willems tumor as a whole thank you please like share and subscribe my youtube channel let's all learn pediatric together next we will cover uh, anti epileptics part 2 okay next will be anti epileptic drugs okay newer anti epileptic drugs part 2 thank you